Greetings. Back again. A little different in here. It's the holidays. December 2022. So, I want to write a letter to my mom. Let's do that. Okay. So, here we are. I've got my my uh, desk here. I'm going to write my letter on this Tomoe River A4 paper. I like Tomoe River paper. It's my favorite paper to write letters on. I also have Clairefontaine. I've used Rhodia in the past and uh, Clairefontaine mostly. And uh, what I don't like about those papers is they are very, very smooth and not particularly toothy, which runs into problems for me in that the pens can skip. With this paper, as you can see, it's very sheer, very light. It's almost a vellum. It's a great feeling paper. But what I like about it most is when I get out my line guide for writing, if I can get my line guide, when I get my line guide out, the line guides transmit through the paper exceptionally well. Now, an interesting thing about this paper is when I first got it, I thought, oh man, I'll never be able to write on both sides. But I found that even if I write on both sides, it's not too bad. But uh, just writing, I typically only write on one side. And uh, this really transmits very well. When I, want to write a sh when I want to write a shorter letter, I use the A5 paper. This is typically what I use to correspond with, again, Tomoe River. And, uh, and I do have some Clairefontaine. I have A4 and A5 Clairefontaine Triomphe paper as well. It's a little heavier. Very smooth, wonderful feeling paper, uh, thicker, so I don't really, I can't really see my line guide through it, but it's a great paper. Another item that I have when I write is a little piece of one of my, of one of my uh, blotter papers, and oftentimes I get the big blotter papers so that I can cut them up and put them on my, uh, my uh, blotter here, but. I like to have this because when once I have the paper on the line guide, I can put my hand on the line on the paper and I can write my letter using this to keep my hand off of the paper. The reason why you need to keep your hand or the reason why I need to keep my hand off the paper is because the oils in my hand will get into the paper and as I start to write to the bottom of my letter, the ink starts to reject out of the paper and I get a lot of smudging or hard starts or just where lines just fade in the middle, the pen won't run evenly. If uh, So uh, I always like to have a piece of blotter paper for my hand so when I write. It also makes it easier for me to just be able to blot something when I get a line and be able to do it that way. Now these lines that I have on here are not just borders for where to write, but they're also guides for my envelopes. I like to buy a lot of envelopes at once, and I get these C6 envelopes. Now, with the A5 paper, they are perfect for A5 because all you have to do is fold the A5 paper in half, and you can get the letter into it, into these six C6. These are called C6 envelopes, but the C6 is twice as large as a piece of A5, so simply folding it in half, and I can fit it into my envelope. However, the A4 paper is twice the size of the A5 paper, so if I fold this four times, I can fit it into my envelope. However, I like to use my sealing wax stamps, and because I like using the sealing wax stamps, I have made a guide so that I can fold this paper and be able to use it and make a and make a kind of an envelope. When I was a kid, I used to go over and play at my friend's house, the Neswalds, and I've mentioned them before. And the reason why is because I used to help them with their Christmas cards. Now, when I fold this, I want to fold it ex slightly eccentrically so that one end is slightly larger than the other. So I'm going to just overlap a little bit there when I fold that crease. And the purpose for that is so that I can fold this end 
over this end. Now, I need to make sure I fold it within the lines, not on the lines, because otherwise it will be too big. It's almost too big now. And so, again, I'm going to fold it eccentrically, so instead of being right at it, it's going to be slightly over, maybe a millimeter or so. And then when I fold that paper down, I now have a piece of I now have a piece of paper that is wider at this end than at this end. And that is so that I can fold it up into my envelope. And when I do that, I want to fold it this far, about halfway. And then we you can see how much smaller this end is. With that very small deflection, you can see how much smaller it is. And then I'm going to fold it here. And this allows me to then fold it, of course, up here. And now I can make a little envelope out of this by simply snugging this end into this end. Now, as I was mentioning, I used to uh, go over to my friend's house. They used to like to do living history events. And so one of the things we would do is we would fold paper so that they could make envelopes and send them to friends at Christmas. Now, the original, the original waxes that we used to use were made from a paraffin wax and a, uh, a resin. And um, and when it would dry, it dries very hard. And so, in fact, you can't send that kind of wax through the mail anymore. I can't remember what the uh, ingredient is in it. But, um, but uh, it dries very hard, and it holds the paper really well. And these new sealing waxes are more flexible. They're almost rubbery. You can see I can flex that. That's so that when it goes through, it won't shatter and clog the machine the the uh, mail sorting machine. I still don't like to send this through the mail, even when it's sealed, because these edges, I have uh, had people tell me that their letters got torn because the sorting machines will catch them and rip. And then if I, if I seal these down, it makes the letter really hard to open. And another issue is that this end is open as well. And sometimes that can catch on a machine or in uh, when it's being processed by the post office, and in turn, it'll get ripped up. So I like to make them, I like to, I'll use my seal on it, and then I will place it into the envelope in a traditional letter fashion. When you open a letter, you tear across the top, and then you're able to extract the letter, and the letter should be facing, the seal should be facing on this side so that they open the letter this way, and then are able to unfold the letter and read it. Now, of course, in back in the day, they used to have different methods of folding where the letters might be folded sideways at times. And the reason for doing them that way was because they could make them more secure, more private. They would fold the paper in half so that it couldn't be read, so that no one could read it by popping it open a little bit and peeking inside. So I'm going to write a letter to my mother, and then we will uh, use the seal, and uh, we'll use the burner and seal this up. Now, I am going to use, for the letter writing, I'm going to use my wonderful uh, Collier, my Edison Collier pen, which has the Independence Flex Nib, and this has the Noodler's Noodler's Elysium Blue. Uh, and, of course, I have my Mont Blanc in here. And when I go to address the letter, when I go to address the letter, I am going to use my good old India ink and my dip pen. Why? Because the Elysium Blue is not a permanent ink, and if the letter gets, if this envelope gets wet, this being wintertime, the address can smear. If I use this ink, this is a water-fast ink, and it will not smudge or smear if in the, in, in the event that the envelope gets wet. Uh, the letter might get damaged, but that's uh, <laughs> not not terribly likely. These Clairefontaine uh, envelopes are pretty nice. 
though they can feather the paper is not it's not um it's not like the uh it's not like the writing paper they it it uh, it's more open the tooth is more open and so the inks can feather a little bit but not bad and i really love that they are peel and stick instead of lick and stick and then when we're done my mother having been born in the lunar new year of the tiger i will seal it up with one of the last of my lunar new year tiger stamps and uh like any good son you should always write to your mother i write i do a lot of this and uh <laughs> yeah so anyway i'll write my letter and then we will seal it up <laughs> Let's seal this up. And uh, to do that, I'll just reach up here and get my my kit here, my nice little kit. Now, I have used these for a very long time. And I found that I really like this Samson historical kit. I've seen this same style of kit for sale in other places. And it holds the things that I need it to hold. It holds my seals. These are my seals this is uh my custom seal that is a trombone seal and this one is a bee i'm sure that you can figure out why that might be and another bee another style of bee and when my son was young he liked foxes so i have this nice fox seal as well and uh here's some examples of those seals here this is the bee Oh, it's backwards. There we go. That's the B. And here's the other B, which is a little more legible. This is the one I use most commonly. I like this B, but it's, it's kind of hard to see. And here's my custom seal, which is a, a trombone, if you can't tell. And here is my son's fox seal. And today, ooh, I guess we'll use the B, since I'm sending this letter to my mother. And uh, you, I'm not being particularly careful with these right here, but uh, it, it always is a good idea to be careful with these because once they get damaged, they can be pretty beat up. And as you can see, the detail on this looks so fine. You'd wonder if that's going to show up, but as you can see on here, it actually shows up quite well, the details in the top of this arch here with the stars. It's a, it's a nice, this is a nice piece that in there. Now, I do have the burner for this, and I have used this burner, but I don't use this burner anymore. The reason why is because I just don't do it enough that uh, it warrants the amount of kerosene that ends up evaporating out of this. Now, if you do have one of these and you do get the little burner, it do, do not use lamp oil in this. Use kerosene in this, because if you use lamp oil, uh, it's awfully greasy, and it doesn't burn as cleanly. So use use uh, use kerosene. I have my handle. This is not the handle that the that it came with. This is my handle. We don't need these things lying around. I'll put those over here for now. So I use I use um, just a regular candle. That's a scented candle. And I have my little uh, cup here that I use. This uh, did come with a cup, but I find that uh, the, the uh, when I got this, gosh, when I got this, the handle was here, and then there was a dipper cup in there. And I like the cup that it came with, but uh, this one's slightly wider, and it fits in this stand better. When I keep this on the side of my desk, I find this fits right over the top of this candle really well so I can just park it in a corner and it all sits nicely. Now here are my matches. So we're going to open this up. Yes, I like to use wooden matches. Instead of a lighter pop that in there. And you might think, well, you put a burning match in it, it's not going to catch fire. It's not hot enough. 
And uh, even if it does, I'm sitting right here. So we were all safe. Now in the drawer, I do use the drawer to keep my, my little uh, sealing wax hexes. So one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to get your fingers on the face of your seal. Again, the oils from your hand can cause trouble with rejection of the wax when you go to seal it up. And some people put a dot, I do as well, on their seals, but they, they put them on the top. And I don't do that because when I go to put the seal on, I'm looking at the bottom of it. So I've always just found it's easier to do it at the bottom. I'm going to set that aside and let that be cool. And uh, let's see, we'll throw one of these and one of those, and why not? We'll throw a purple one in too. And then we'll melt those down. And when I melt them, I like to try to roll them around a little bit. Roll them around. The burner works much better for this process than a candle. But again, the burner needs kerosene. And I just don't use it enough because the kerosene evaporates out of that tiny lamp pretty quickly. And so it seems like every time I go to use it, it, uh, it always needs to be recharged. And um, I do use my, I do use this fairly often. I shouldn't say that I don't use it enough. I, I use it quite a bit. It's just that um, it can be frustrating when, it, uh, when I have to still pull out the candle because I've run out of kerosene. The uh, kerosene lamp does melt the wax much faster. One thing you don't want to happen is you don't want your wax to boil. You want to try to keep it from boiling. And this, these uh, little pieces of sealing wax are easy to monitor. Once they melt, you can really tell that they've, that they have uh, completely lost their integrity and have become viscous so that they'll pour nice and easy without lumps and uh, without scorching it or getting it to bubble. Some people put a tea light underneath the stand and just leave it there, and you can see a little bubble there. I don't want that bubble. I want to raise it above the heat so that it doesn't get that hot. The bubbles cause a problem because you'll lose definition on your stamp if you have bubbles in your sealing wax. Now, that's pretty well melted. There's just a little bit left on the top, and so... I'm going to turn this, make sure that everything has the right attitude, and let's do this. Some people are in a big hurry to get their stamp on the wax. I don't find that that's ever a problem. And I never press down on my wax seal. I don't find that necessary either, simply because it will always pretty much give me, just from its own weight, a nice seal. Man, it looks great. And then I can use this pedestal to cool my wax. I may clean that out. Sometimes I just leave it in there. And uh, I've used this, sometimes I'll find myself sealing an envelope you know, more than one letter, especially at this time of year, when I write a lot of letters, sometimes I use a number of different seals. If you do that, you need to remember to cool the end of this. After a couple of times in hot wax, it'll heat up, and then it doesn't have very good definition once it gets hot. So sometimes I keep a little uh, ice around, or you'll see people lick them. They lick them to create a little barrier between the wax and the brass that that can help, but really what that what they're doing is they're cooling they're cooling it down. So put that in there and close it up. Put my wax bits back in here. I'll set that aside. I've got my lamp and my cable. We'll just put those on top of each other, set those aside. And now I have whoops, I have my sealed envelope. Sometimes I will put something underneath so that this curves up a little bit because as the wax cools, it shrinks and it will pull the paper up. But uh, that looks pretty nice. 
Sometimes I'll write more stuff on the outside, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. And then it'll fit very nicely into my Clairefontaine envelope. And off it will go. Yeah, I'm supposed to try to make this look so smooth and easy, right? Yes. But uh, I'll pop that in here. And then when my mother gets it, and then my mother will be able to pull that out and see the seal. And all will be right with the world. And uh, because I uh, like to use permanent inks, I will use my dip pen to address my letter. And then I will uh, have to get back in my box here so I can get my trusty Chinese New Year stamps out. My mother was born in the year of the tiger, so <laughs> I just have a couple left. Just enough to get me to this next Chinese New Year. And uh, that's, uh, well, that's how I do my letters. So I hope that you found this interesting. And until next time, have a happy holiday season. And I hope to see you before the end of the year. Thanks for watching.